And in a global perspective, custody services are on the verge of major transformation. Digitization and state-of-the-art technologies offer the potential for large efficiencies and, of course, savings. This could mean big changes in an industry which has in the past seen fragmented technology and inconsistent processes. Joining us now to look at the evolution of custody services is Matthew Bax, Global Head of Custody Security Services at City. Welcome to Cybos TV, Matthew. Thank you very much. It's good to Thank see you, but before, before we get into the meat of this, how does it feel to be networking with people after an it's absence great. of two it's or so great. years? It's really, really <laughs> nice. Uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been fantastic. Energy is high. Meetings have been very productive. Clients have been very, very open to new ideas. So it's been great. A couple of key themes. Obviously, last year was very dominated by pandemic, automation, digitalization. I think there's, there's two consistent themes that we've had rolling out across the client base. Some tr very traditional foundational items, which are back to basics in my view, but very important. I think we've got a little bit of a sense of realism that now we're post covid what we're going to do to the core of the operating model, but nicely blended with some of those more forward-looking, futuristic, what can we do to make the post-trade services better and a bit more of an innovation in a digital way. So energy has been high, conversations have been great, and obviously it's back in, back in person. I think it's been, uh, it's been a great event. So it's been pretty easy identifying some of the current trends because there's a sense that perhaps things have been in hibernation for two years, yeah. and now here it is. Yeah, exactly. I think... We all, we all thought that we'd move very quickly through automation digitalization. We all thought that we really wouldn't need, we could leapfrog with fintechs or different, different components that, were, that really did uh, transpire over the, the pandemic. But now there's that sense of realism, the sense of do the core then add on with those specific uh, fintechs or, or capabilities to add uh, incremental benefits. And I think that, that realism has actually been very evident that people understand we've still got to do the hard work. We haven't got any easy answer ahead of us. Let's talk about uh, operational resiliency yep. uh, and, and risk management for a moment. Yep. Uh, how have the events of, of, of recent years altered the notions of resiliency? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and actually, one of the foundational topics that I was saying is, has definitely been, been asked by our clients. Um, we used to think about operational resiliency as simple systems and operating teams across our globe. We used to talk about retire, uh, return to, to cover, to turnover, to failover, whether it took two hours or four hours. And it was actually a pretty basic concept. And I think not just the pandemic, but also our regulators and our client expectations and their clients' expectations has completely transformed that topic to be, I think, much more valuable. It's no longer, let's call it a BCP exercise or a specific exercise in recovery. It's now about understanding the losses that our clients could face in the instance of poor operational resiliency, and then mapping it through the entire infrastructure. So we've spent a lot of time this year looking at our core application set or operational teams, and actually really focusing in on the peak usage at a specific time of the day, as opposed to just looking at the whole day. And I think what that does is it makes us understand that you're gonna get a problem 30 minutes before the market closes, not in the morning, and you've got to be able to recover, make sure that you can hit your client requirements, and then filter that all the way through the operating model. So operational resiliency has actually, I think, been the number one foundational topic we've spoken about. It's clients needing the certainty, understanding our operating model, and understanding the interconnectedness of the operating model, and then working out how they can build in resiliency, how they can build in that type of protection that they need both again for their regulators and their mm. clients. I mean, what are clients actually telling you about the environment in which we're operating? Because the sense of risk yeah. has been heightened. What are you gauging from them on that front? Yeah, I think, um, listen, we've definitely got market volatility. Mm. We've definitely got potential credit events. Um, we've got a uh, macroeconomic environment that's very challenging. So what our clients are looking for is, is communication, bit of certainty. Um, our volumes over the course of the last three years have been going through the roof. We're probably year on year 15% up on core basic transactional activity um, because of the increases in, those, in, that, in that volatility. So our clients really want to know that we're scalable, we're resilient, we've got an operating model that still works post-COVID because the operating model's changed, and they want to be able to risk manage their portfolio for all of those different factors. Um, 
our lives have become much, much more complicated, but I think the way that our clients are thinking about overlaying risk management on top of their portfolios and the requirements they've got from us have been absolutely critical. One of the things that we have fared very well on, I think, is our local infrastructure. So we have bricks and mortar in each one of our jurisdictions. Having that capability has enabled us to risk manage through that volatile environment by really connecting what's happening to the asset or the cash all the way back to the underlying investors. And that's really been one of the critical things our clients have looked for us. And how does this all tie into digital transformation? Yeah. So great thing about digital transformation, this is back to my point at the start, I think the industry's worked out there's no silver bullet. Mm. In order to, to digitally transform, we have to look at each individual process. We have to simplify that process. We have to standardize and we have to effectively take out exceptions. Otherwise, you can't digitalize the process. Then once you've done that hard work and that boring work, but the piece that people often forget about, you can then overlay that with technology to start transforming that activity. As that relates back to your previous question, how does that tie back into the risk management? If we have simpler processes, if we reduce reconciliation, if we reduce those steps, if we simplify that model, the way that I risk manage and our clients can risk manage is made much easier. It's made much, much easier because it's a simpler process. It's a straight line between the client action and what's happening into the local market. Then you add the tools on top, which is the digital transformation piece actually, and then provide the data back through to our clients to ensure that they can see the end-to-end -end process. Mm. So that's why I love the concept of digital transformation. It's not just the client experience that you benefit, but it's actually the end-to-end -end chain of post-trade services. And I'm hoping the unintended uh, um, consequence of that is effectively we get lower cost to serve, cheaper unit production, and better, more efficient post-trade services. Mm. I want to stay on the technology theme, actually, and to, just to bring in DLT, distributed yeah. ledger technology, because there is a view among some people that DLT will be an enabler to shortening the settlement cycles. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's obviously an issue which has gained incredible momentum. But from the point of view of your own clients, yeah. how do they see DLT in relation to the settlement issue? Are they really enthusiastic about it? Or is there a sense that perhaps the jury's still out because in some ways it's a very new yeah. technology yeah, and there are quite a few questions around it, particularly with security. Definitely. So, yeah, we, we run a city, we run a um, FMI study where we asked exactly that question actually to the participants in the CSDs. Uh, and so on your first question on settlement compression, about 45% of all FMIs believe that all markets should be moving towards a T plus one cycle, so shortening the compression. And actually, ultimately, the objective should be this concept of atomic settlement that, that I know Cybos has covered before. So if you've got that, if you've got that parameter, which is that 45% believe we need to shorten the cycle, we then ask the question, is DLT an important component of that? And I think about 50% said yes at some point, but at, I think the important point to your, your, your question is at some point is undefined. Um, there's been a lot of activity in this space with a lot of different announcements and I think all of them are trying to prove to your point, can we get the security sorted? Can we get the scalability sorted? Can we find the use case? Um, as I said again in the introduction, I think we're a bit more pragmatic mm. about the blend between the hard work and the traditional work and you know, the, the FinTech future and how those th two things come together. But I do believe, I mean, if you think T plus one, US has just announced it, India, Canada, we're moving that way. For those markets, DLT will not be the solution mm. because it's coming next year. And our clients need time to understand the technology. Our regulators need the time to understand the technology. I think the overall framework has got to prove out some of the critical points you spoke about. Mm, fair point. Well, sadly, time is against us, Matthew. But thank you so much for some fascinating insights. That's Matthew Bax, Global Head of Custody Security Services at City. Thank you so much for joining us.